And in the last part of this lecture, I uh, talk briefly about some of the available tools, open source tools, uh, which you can use for to get brain-computer interfaces implemented. It turns out there's actually quite a few. Um, one of the oldest ones is uh, Biosig. It's, it's a MATLAB toolbox, uh, open source, cross-platform, which has a lot of functionality, specifically in signal processing, and time series analysis, and so on. So there's lots of stuff implemented, which gets you very far. Um, the only caveat is um, this, tool, uh, this toolbox only handles basically offline analysis. So y you can post hoc say, OK, I can do get whatever 90% performance on this, you know, 90% correct on this data. But it's not an online capable thing. You need to rewrite everything that you want to use um, for an online application. And also, the toolbox is not very easy to use. So um, basically, it's sort of convoluted in some areas, and there is not user graphical user interface. So it, it's difficult to deal with that kind of um, program. I generally, by the way, give you pros and cons for every toolbox. Another one is um, BCI 2000. It's also one of the oldest ones. It has an entirely different focus. It fundamentally is about online processing. It's written in C++. It's by now cross-platform started out as Windows only. And it, it's primarily about getting your experiment to work. It's a turnkey thing. It has um, data acquisition, signal processing, stimulus presentation, and so on. It uh, allows you to do experiment control and all that. Um, it's pretty well debugged and, and so on, and very well maintained. It has good documentation and all that. Um, it, uh, they basically wanted to build a system that works in everyone's computer. That meant Windows computer for most of its time. But now, again, as I said, they port this. Um, the only issue with that is that because it's C++ and so on, um, the signal processing part is actually rather small. There are not many advanced methods in there, just some basic ones, if you will. And so if you're doing methods research and you try to push a bar, this is, will become limiting relatively, relatively soon. So it's not really built for that. It's built for getting certain kinds of simple things to work. And then you can go on and do all the rest yourself, in a sense. So BCI 2000 lets you do it, but it doesn't provide you with everything you need for that. Um, there's another uh, open source toolbox which has a similar idea. It's open vibe. So it's also C++. It's deployable. It's cross-platform, and so on and so on. Um, what it adds on top of PCI 2000 is that it gives you a, a way of visually programming your systems. You can put blocks onto your editor pane, say a filter and another kind of filter, and so on, connect them with wires, and send your signal through them. So it's specifically for people who can't program. It's for non-programmers. Uh, and so their idea was there's perhaps clinicians who want to build a signal analysis pipeline. So for those people, it's good. Or people who are just trying to mess around with some hardware and so on. And so that's a pretty good toolbox. The only issue is because the framework does so much stuff, like showing graphically your modules, it's pretty hard to extend. So if you want to implement a method, you have to do a lot of stuff to get it to show up in the GUI there and so on. Um, so that's sort of, the, you know, the downside to that software. The, uh, here's, a, here's another one um, that's uh, third-party software that's for MATLAB also, like Biosig. Um, it's a commercial one. Uh, it's not very expensive, but um, it's, it's not open source or anything. But what they are trying to do is build a turnkey system, which even includes, you know, uh, hardware by the same company. And you know, they even sell you like the whiteboard for your lab, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, so it, it, they try to get you started with your lab, in a sense, at the cost of some money, of course. And here is uh, our toolbox, BCI Lab, which has a different focus than most of the others. The focus of BCI Lab is um, to, to squeeze out the maximum in performance in terms of uh, algorithms and methods and the sophistication of the general processing. Uh, that's just our DNA and how we do it. And so as a result, it has basically the largest collection of algorithms from signal processing, machine learning, and so on for BCI purposes as of 2012. 
Not sure if it still holds. Um, <laughs> but that's basically what it what sets it apart. It's also for MATLAB. It's also cross-platform. It's offline, online. So it's the same code for offline analysis, for online analysis, and so on. Um, the trouble with that toolbox is it has a complicated framework, perhaps similarly to OpenVibe, and although it's MATLAB. And so if you want to change that framework, uh, change the way in which it works internally, that's a lot of it, it requires a lot of MATLAB expertise. You have to be a MATLAB crack to be able to deviate from the way in which BCI lab works. But on the other, other end, it's very easy to make plugins for it. And uh, it, you know, with LSL, which I'll talk about later, it actually works pretty well for a lot of acquisition devices. We'll talk mostly about that one later on, because this is about methods research and so on, pushing the bar, right? There are a few other toolboxes that I'm not going to talk about in detail, but Basically, uh, together with those, uh, you have a complete overview of the entire open source landscape as of 2013. So, you know, there's Field Trip, which is for MEG primarily, but it has some online features and some EEG features. Also, MATLAB. There is a few other C++ frameworks around. Um, there is a PYFF, P -Y -F -F, a Python-based toolkit for stimulus presentation alone. So this is what you need to design the interaction with the user. It doesn't deal with methods, but it's sort of the missing link when you want to actually get experiments built. Um, and there is one toolbox, which, which is um, also for MATLAB. Uh, it's the BBCI toolbox. It has an enormous amount of methods in it. It's closed source, and it's in-house, but it may be available for licensing. So um, I don't know how expensive that is. We don't have it, <laughs> but just so you know. And uh, that basically ends this uh, module and also this lecture.